What is up, OTG fans? It's your boy Harris Wishard here with Mick Fay, the OTG Godfather, as we break down our regular season awards. Finally, the regular season has come to a close, and we'll break down all of the awards. Obviously, MVP is going to be most discussed and been talked about since the beginning of the year. Nick, how's it going tonight? I'm doing great, Harris. I'm happy to get this award show going. You know, like you said, we got some nice races this year. You know, sometimes, you know, when the awards come around, we already know who's going to win. This year, I think there's a little bit of surprise. We don't know. You mentioned it. The hot topic all season long has been the MVP race. Yeah, and it's uh, it's definitely one that's gotten the basketball world uh, jumping a little bit. I know there have been people that have been frustrated uh, that maybe LeBron's name is not in it more. We, we seem to have narrowed it down to two. And, and obviously Russell Westbrook and James Harden, and we'll give our picks. But, but before we came on, we were talking about the importance of it. Um, now that we've put in, in society today, in sports society today, we've just put in such a emphasis on championships specifically. But I still think there's some prestige to this award. Maybe it's overdone a little bit and it's over the top a little bit, but it seems to be the most talked about uh, MVP in all of professional sports. Yeah, it definitely does. And I think, you know, one reason it's talked about the most is that it's kind of the one of the easier ones to identify in the sense that there's five guys on the court and that one player can really have a huge impact. And when we talk about a sport like the NFL where there's about 22 guys on the field, you know, one guy dictating the success of a team isn't really true because they have to work at a cohesive unit. And when you talk about a guy like Westbrook who's literally willed his team to win on occasions by himself pretty much, that's why I think the MVP award has so much hype in the NBA. And I think, like you said, I think the award, the award matters to me. I like it. I think it's nice to talk about, and it's been a great race. Yeah, definitely has. And the exclamation point the other night, and without further ado, I'm going to reveal my pick. Not, not much of a shock, but the exclamation point the other night is sometimes, and, and Nate Robinson said this to me, we were doing a camp a few years ago, and he says, you know, I'm looking at a lot of the guys. Look, we're looking at the highlight plays, and you know, just for what it did for his contract, and you know the blocks against LeBron, the blocks against Yao. Some, you know, we we tend to forget this is a business, and when you know when you get you know, when he's blocking these big players and making these big plays and having that playoff run, it's just it exemplifies him and kind of takes his contract and brings it up another level and. To make the point relevant to the MVP, I think sometimes there are certain moments and there are certain highlight plays, and it just puts an exclamation point and takes whether he had a better season than Harden or not. And I'm talking about Westbrook. That moment against the Nuggets to me was that highlight, that exclamation point that put it over the top, having the 50 points, hitting the buzzer beater, having the 42 triple doubles. It was just that over the top moment. Man, what else can this guy really do? Yeah, and you know what? You're right. That was a huge moment, and that and I think that like solidified the MVP race for a lot of people. And you know, before I started doing research for the show, I thought that I was going to vote R Russell Westbrook, but I'm going with James Harden. Mm. And I know this is probably. I actually think that James Harden will probably lose, but I think that he probably should win in the sense that he leads the league in points from assist. He's averaging 29 points a game. You know, his usage usage rate is lower than Westbrook's, and. Honestly, people have talked about it all year. Westbrook has padded his stats a little bit to get those 42 triple doubles. I'm not taking anything away from him. But I think if you're going to say, oh, the MVP race is decided by two rebounds because I think Harden's averaging around like eight and change a game, I mean, then I, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm happy to roll with James Harden. I think you look at the Rockets and you going into the season, we're talking the Rockets, we're thinking not a top four seed. Mm. You know, we're talking about Westbrook and the Thunder and we're thinking, you know, that mid-range, that four to six seed. They got, I think, what are they, the sixth seed right now. So the Rockets, on the other hand, Harden's elevated his play. He's playing a new position. He's running this team. And I think the argument is that Harden makes his teammates better than Westbrook makes his teammates better. Well, to, to rebuttal in, in this sense, I think, you know, talk about stat inflation and stat padding and, and that type of thing. Obviously, I think that playing with Dan Tony has helped Harden. That's nothing. That's probably not holding anything against him because – We've seen him put up numbers like that before, but I just think in the exit of Kevin Durant and what happened, what's happened with that franchise for him to come out and play this way and keep this team relevant is incredible. Like anytime a, a great player or a top three or four player leaves or a, you know, hall of fame type player leaves in Durant's stature, 
think about this. Any Dwight Howard leaves the Magic. You know, they don't make. They haven't made the playoffs since. You know, uh, LeBron. Obviously, we know when he left the Cavs, what happened to them. You put Durant's name in that category, and just for to me, how Westbrook has held this thing together, and just the chip on his shoulder in that circumstance, on an emotional um, standpoint, and just giving him the edge in that regard. To me, that's been you know extremely impressive how he's held it together. I'm not the biggest fan of you know some of his shot selection and how efficient he's been, but. There's something you can't take away from him. The guy, you know, plays every night and plays hard every night. And, and Harden does, too. It's not taking any way, anything away from him. I've had to think about this for a while, too. But just in that circumstance, uh, I, that's why I would kind of give the edge to him. Yeah, I mean, I definitely can see the points for both sides. But I think a little bit, like, I also think some of the hype about the triple doubles, and like I said, not to take anything away from Westbrook or anything, but the hype about the triple doubles – and the hype about Kevin Durant leading is kind of added to his cause. Where would you talk? We're talking about the Rockets team that they were eight seed last year. They barely made the playoffs. A lot of people are talking about them this year. Some people didn't even have them in the playoffs. They just thought they'd be a high scoring offensive team. They're a top, top four team in the league. You know, they're right up there with the teams to compete. And if you really look at the Rockets, I can honestly say that they have a chance to compete in the Western Conference Finals and has a chance have a chance to make the NBA championship, the NBA Finals, where we look at OKC, they'll be lucky to get out of the first round at best if if they even win, maybe they could I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if OKC won one game against Houston. Yeah, no, I think that's actually gonna be a, a more competitive series than a lot of people believe and and I think that he could, you know, take them deep. You know, the players voted for Harden a couple of years ago, or even la not last year, a couple of years ago when they did like the player vote or whatever, when it was Curry against Harden. You know, this is the second time um, that his name has been, you know, heavily considered for it. But, you know, I'm going to give the nod to Westbrook. And, you know, we could argue this till, you know, we're blue in the face, but um, then you'll give the, the nod to Harden. But to me, an interesting one and an interesting award uh, is the rookie of the year. And, you know, because for a while, Joel Embiid was a lock. And we know he got injured and, you know, only played in, what, 20, 25 games. And then for a while, um, we thought that his teammate was a lock in Dario Zark, but that's not who I voted for. Who'd you roll with? Malcolm Brogdon. I, I lean towards Malcolm Brogdon, and I think he had a, a real solid impact with that ball club. And I think a lot of people are going to go Zark, but... In, in this case, we've also discussed this a lot in in, um, in that the Rookie of the Year um, is not at all really looked at on wins in that you could be a 15, 20, 25, 30-win team and, and still win this award and be on a roster and still win that award. But I just think what Brogdon's meant uh, in, to that uh, organization and, you know, quickly developed and, and got better as the year went along and and gave Kidd a, a, a Jason Kidd a reliable uh, floor general for a team that's going to make the playoffs is is what you know gave me to uh, has made me give uh, Brogdon the nod. Yeah, I think Brogdon's been great. He's you know he's had a great impact with the Bucks filled in nicely. But I think Dario Saric's a better player, and he's probably going to be a better player future uh, along in the future. Just I think uh, that's who I'm going to pick, obviously. And uh, he's I think he's just a better all around player. He just has like that like I mentioned before on the show. He's just like a baller. Like, he just finds a way to help his team win. And obviously the Sixers aren't competing for the playoffs, but he helped steady that ship when Joel Embiid went out. You know, it's not like they were completely terrible. I think in uh, April and March he averaged around 17 or 18 points a game. So I know now he's a little bit injured and banged up, but I definitely like what I saw from him. And on some nights he was probably the be one of the better players on the court. And, you know, I'm not, not no offense to Malcolm Brogdon. I don't think on any night he's really one of the top three players on the court. Just be, even on his own team, like, yeah, he, he does play point guard, but Jonas really runs the show and creates the offense for that team. I think he's a great player, but I think Dario Sarek is definitely going to come away with this award. Yeah, it's it's definitely possible. I went away from – I went I was – teams are for a while, but I definitely took a look at the numbers, and I didn't realize the, you know, the impact that uh, Brogdon was having. Um, and I said it's not – it's a rule of thumb that I usually don't, you know, look at wins. Um but in this case, I think that could play a role in him potentially winning this award. And I also think that some people are going to vote Philly. Just, you know, vote for Sark just because, you know, of Embiid and they want the award to stay in Philadelphia because obviously if Embiid stays healthy, he w runs away with this award, and I don't think it's even close. Oh, and no, Embiid was a lock. Yeah, so, I mean, and I think some people probably might vote for him anyways, but 
with only playing the game, the amount of games under 40 games, I think he played. It's you know he can't really win the award. All right, so we're zero for two in agreeing. Let's see if <laughs> let's see if we could uh, maybe agree on one here. Six man of the year. Um, there is uh, this one's a little interesting. I think there is a uh, a couple of candidates that are up for this one, and you know someone that I had leaned to for most of the season uh, is Eric Gordon. I think Eric Gordon of the Rockets deserves this award. Um, I think he's, you know, given that the, given that spark off the bench that this team's needed, you spoke about when we spoke about the MVP race, you know, how effective um, Harden has made his teammates and Gordon has made his job definitely easier. His spot up three just looked good for, you know, majority of the year. He slowed down at times, but, you know, beginning of the year it was a lock, but he slowed down at times. But I think he's done enough to, to solidify himself as a six man of the year. Yeah, uh, we're going to agree on this one. I'm going to go with Eric Gordon as well. The second leading scorer on the Rockets, you know, he gives that team an element off the bench. And he's had his best season pretty much as a pro. He stayed healthy for over 70 games. And this is kind of another example of Harden making one of his teammates better because I think part of the reason Gordon's having one of his better seasons is Harden's constantly setting up for threes. And also Dan Tony helps Gordon because he's a good fit in that system. And I like what he's done. He's, you know, he's a great player. And I think it's nice to see him finally have a healthy season and be successful. For sure. But uh, talking about, you mentioned there's a couple guys. I mean, you could even argue Lou Williams on the same team could win this award. Zach Randolph could win this award. James Crawford. Johnson, Ennis Cantor, Jamal Crawford, who's won this a few times. Andre Goddard. So, yep, Iggy. You know, how many players can come in for a Kevin Durant and then that team goes on a winning streak? So this award is definitely complicated. I'm not really like, oh, my God, I need Eric Gordon to win. Like, I, I'm okay if someone else wins this award because there's definitely plenty of candidates available. Yeah, I think it's, this is definitely not a lock by any stretch. I think, you know, but I do think the next one that I'm going to bring up is a lock. And the most, who will win most improved player in the NBA this season? And he plays on the same team that I pick for rookie of the year, and that's the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah, Giannis Antetokounmpo, that's my guy. I, I definitely like seeing his career develop, and he's really turned into a star player. And there's probably argument that he's, you know, a top tw 25 player in this league. He's a true star. He leads the team in points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. One of only a few players to other do that. Some of them, you know, one of the players being named LeBron James and Scottie Pittman, Kevin Garnett. So, I mean, Giannis is in a great category. His career is ascending. As soon as he develops that jump shot, we're going to be talking about a deadly player in Milwaukee. Yeah, and it's not just – the numbers because sometimes the numbers don't tell everything and someone who's improving it's the eye test and he's only 22 years old yeah i mean this guy can take one dribble from the three-point line and end up at the rim dunking on you so yeah. it, he's he's a unique player and he's going to give somebody a hard time in the first round you know so because normally uh, when you normally when you pick a most improved player it goes from you see his points per game go up from you know, eight to 20 or like a, there's that drastic improvement, like a CJ McCollum comes to mind of last year. Like his points per game went up six from 16 to 22. But the thing is he took the leap from perennial for last year. I think if you looked at it, it's, you know, it's a perennial all-star got a high potential. And now it's like, wow, he's 22 first all-star game started in the all-star game. And now, you know, he has even higher, you know, expectate, and we have been higher expectations for him as, you know, potential MVP, potential superstar, potential Hall of Famer. Kid has had nothing but unbelievable things to say about the kid's work ethic, his attitude. And so it's something, sometimes it's not just a, he went up from this point to game to this point to game or his usage rate or whatever it may be. Just, you could tell that he went from one level to a, a completely not another level. Yeah. And it's his show in Milwaukee. You know, he runs everything there and he's the leader of that team. And, I mean, we could even see John Smith, you know, maybe make that first all-NBA second or third team this year with the season that he's having. 100%. We are in agreement in two in a row here. Yeah, two in a row. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> All right. So we are going to go next to Defensive Player of the Year. And this is an award that is uh, evaded uh, someone who I'm going to pick right now for a while. I know it means a lot to him. The only warrior I think that will win a regular season award, that is going to be Draymond Green. I think he deserves it. You know, he's been the anchor for a while there. He's led the league in steals, I think, now. And I think it's just time. I think he's 
he's, he's, I don't know if this is a award where he's, oh, yeah, I put my time and I put my work in, but I think he's definitely deserving of this award this year. You know, this one, this was the award that, like, I really de- wasn't able to decide till about, like, a minute or two before the show started. And it was between Draymond Green and Rudy Gobert. But I'm agree with you on Draymond Green and for a couple reasons. You know, a lot of their stats match up, like defensive win shears, Gobert's first, a Green second, defensive rating, I think Green's, like, second or third, Gobert's second or third. So, I mean, there's a, in defensive field goal percentage, shoot, like, t- uh, players shooting against them, I think they're both around 43%. So they're both, you know, great players. I think... The argument could be made is that Gobert probably plays with better defensive players where defensive cog on the Warriors and a lot of people questioned, you know, oh, what's that Warriors defense going to be like without Andrew Bogan and Harrison Barnes? Well, you know, Draymond Green has come through. He's elevated his game. He gets his hand on a ton of pass. He's a great help defender, and he just causes a lot of a lot of issues on the offensive side for the other team. Yeah, and it's crazy because now, you know, the, the Leonard, the quiet Leonard, Defensive player of the year, Rain will end. He had won it two years in a row. It's and crazy. I think some of that has to do with Kawhi having to take on so much offensively now that he's kind of drained to be that defensive player of the year type player he's on the still, other end. He's still a fantastic defensive player. That's not not mentioning him in the top two is not taking anything away from him. Yeah, well, I'm sure in the playoffs he'll elevate his game back to being the best perimeter defender in the NBA. And it's crazy. I'm looking at this thing. I'm looking at this defensive player. How, oh, how the mighty have fallen. Joe Kim Noah was a defensive player of the year in 2014. I don't even want to get started about Joe Kim Noah. We could but, talk about but, 30 minutes. <laughs> Dwight, Dwight Howard won this award three times in a row. But, um, yeah, so I think we're in agreement, uh, you know, in, 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 in Draymond Green uh, will win this award for the first time. And, you know, sometimes, and I don't know if this is a factor either, but when a team's won – you know, 66 games, I think somewhere, if, if they're not going to get the MVP like they've had the last couple of years, you know, if they're not going to have the coach of the year, which they've had, I think sometimes you know, they, they'll get something. You know, yeah, they lives. need to get something. I mean, it's still a historic season, even though it's like, oh, you know, we're just used to the war- not, we're used to the Warriors breaking records. They won 73 games last year, but this season is still a very good NBA season for a team. So I think that kind of goes under the radar just because they didn't win 70 games. Well, yeah, I mean, if I think it's still what top – it's got to be top 10, top 7. And you consider they're missing probably their best player for a, a solid chunk of the season? Yep, yeah, like 15 games. They they did rip off the winning streak without him, but they they, they did drop like three or four in that stretch that, that he wasn't there. But um, the final award that we'll look at today is Coach of the Year. And – Based on what you said earlier, I think we're going to disagree on this one. But I went with Brad Stevens in Boston. And the reason I've done that did that is because I think the way he's built that thing up and coming off what he accomplished in college to adjust to the NBA lifestyle, adjust, you know, to to adjust to what he's had to uh, you know, accomplish here in the NBA, he's built something there. And they built something in Boston and they are finally look like they're kind of getting over the top. And I know Mike D'Antoni's had a terrific season. He's done an amazing job in Houston. But I'm going to go with the Butler product, uh, Brad Stevens in Boston. You know, I mean, you know, I think Brad Stevens will probably win this award at some point in his career. But this year is not the, not the year. I think D'Antoni has done too much with Houston. You know, their expectations going to the season, they weren't expected to be a top three team in the West. They weren't supposed to be a top five team in the NBA and have a chance to compete for an NBA final spot. So I think you have to give it to him. He also made the move to move James Harden from shooting guard to point guard and give, make Harden have one of his best seasons yet. And a lot of the players on this team are having some of their best seasons ever. And I think a lot of that has to do with D'Antoni and the system that he's run. And obviously give Daryl Morey credit for bringing the right guys. But he, they've all gelled great, and this team is deadly going to the playoffs offensively. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, and I've looked at like what a bunch of like Mark Stein saying, experts are saying. A lot of people are leaning towards Mike D'Antoni. And I don't even – sometimes I don't even see Stevens' name in the top three. Like, I've seen – Well, I think the argument I've, for Stevens to be – I've seen Scott Brooks come up in, in certain – like, with Washington before. I've seen – I think maybe – Well, if you Boston think about Stevens, a, Stevens in Boston, you think about it like, all right, you know, going to the season, we probably thought they were going to be one of the top three teams in the Eastern Conference. Like, it's not like they've made a huge jump. I think the chance that they have at the one seed is more of Cleveland not playing well than Boston playing great because they've had an opportunity to jump on that one seed and they really haven't come through and they've lost games to bad teams over the last month. So I think, like, 
I'm more impressed by what Mike D'Antoni has done with Houston this year than what Brad Stevens has done with Boston. You know, they were supposed to get better this year. They added Al Horford. If tomorrow I asked you to, I know this is not how they, this is not how they, you know, break down the award. But if I asked you tomorrow, who would you rather coach the Nets? I mean, I would, I would take Brad Brad Stevens, obviously, but that doesn't mean he coached better than Mike D'Antoni this year. Because you could argue that D'Antoni has been the better coach this season with his offense that he's running. You know, Stevens yeah. has obviously done a great job, but he's getting the best out of players that weren't expected to be this great. Yeah, and you know what? I think D'Antoni's had to have won this award in Phoenix. I would think so. Yeah, he's had to. Um, but, you know, I hear what you're saying. I, I think this one was like my, you know, the who I think is, is going to take over, you know, that because eventually Popovich will retire, right? Eventually. And, <laughs> well, who knows? But um, I don't know. Yeah, Mike D'Antoni did win the award in 2005, by the way, with the Suns. Um, Scott Brooks has won it before. But, yeah, he's – it's probably you know what? At the end of the day, it's probably going to be the D'Antoni might I'm, – I'm sure there – I'm sure that Stevens will probably get a couple of votes, though. My, my yeah, he'll probably get a couple of votes. But like you said, Scott Brooks might get some votes. They had a rough start to the season. They came through. Eric Spolster, I don't think he'll get any first place votes, but he might get some of the second or third place votes just for the fact that he turned around that Heat team and they had a chance for the playoffs. I don't think they're going to. We're recording this right before the playoffs games are. I mean, the playoffs are announced completely. There's still a game tonight. So I don't think the Heat are going to make it, but that's for another day. Yeah. So, you know, in conclusion, we, we, had, deg- we had agreed on three, disagreed on three, but definitely be sure to listen to our playoff previews that are going to be on tomorrow. And we're all jacked up because starting uh, this weekend, uh, the much anticipated NBA playoffs will will be underway. So appreciate everybody listening uh, to our award uh, show tonight and all the and all the support and all the fans out there on Twitter, Instagram, follow us on Twitter at OTG Basketball. And, um, you know, Nick, definitely uh, thanks for having me on and jumping on with us. Yeah, great stuff, Harris, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Have a good night, guys.